In Revelation chapter 5, in our last lesson, we saw the scene where John looked and saw he who was sitting on the throne and had in his right hand a scroll or a book with writing on both sides. And he heard an angel with a loud voice saying, Who is worthy to open the book and break its seals? And it said, No one was worthy. And John wept and he wept. And then it said, one of the elders said to him, do not weep for the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, he has triumphed and he is worthy to break the seals and open the book. When John turned, he didn't see the lion. He saw the lamb that had the appearance of being slain. We're going to talk about that today in the Word. Good morning and welcome back to The Day in the Word. I'm so glad you joined us here in the book of Revelation. Hi, I'm Glenn Schaefer. And if you're listening on the podcast or if you'd like to download that app, it's podbean, P-O-D-B-E-A-N.com. It's a great app. We're also on Spotify and Pandora and other means you can access us. If you're watching on YouTube, thank you. Be sure and give us a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't, and you'll be notified each time these teachings come out. Today, we're in the second part of chapter 5 of the book of Revelation. I wish we could do the entire chapter in one lesson, but we're having to break it up. Last week, or the last time we taught, we saw where John had this scene of the Ancient of Days, Father God Himself, sitting on the throne and holding in his hand what was a book. We discovered it was the New Testament, the New Covenant, that Jesus only was worthy to open. For no one who came before him, Abraham, Moses, no one or David was worthy to open it. Only Jesus, who is the Lion of the tribe of Judah, who is the root of of David is worthy to open its seals, the seven seals, the sevenfold perfect witness of what was in that book of the new covenant. Now we move into verse six. He says, then I saw a lamb looking as if it had been slain, standing in the center of the throne, encircled by the four living creatures and elders. The lamb had seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. He went and took the scroll from the right hand of him who sat on the throne. That scene is a powerful scene. If we had time to get through the whole chapter, you would see all of heaven erupts when he does this. How is he the lamb? The writer, John, bringing forth this revelation, is the only one in the New Testament that uses the term lamb for Jesus. As he said in John chapter 1, Behold the Lamb of God, which takes away the sins of the world. He is the lamb that was slain, as the scripture says. He is the center of all the history. It is finished in the sacrificial work of Christ. The foundation of his kingship is in the sacrificial work of the atonement. That's what gives him all of his power and his exaltation, that he was given that place at the right hand of God and all supreme authority. That is the lamb that was slain. He was standing as if he was slain. Not just upright standing, which obviously we could say that, but meaning permanently there. All of heaven displays the sacrificial atonement of the precious Lamb of God. Sometimes here on this earth, we pass over that too quickly. It should forever be before our eyes. Every day we should be aware of Jesus, who was the perfect Lamb who was slain on our behalf. All of heaven beholds it. And heaven rejoices for all of creation in history 
is surrounding this living Christ who paid the ultimate price and redeemed for himself people from every tribe and every tongue. He said this lamb that he saw had seven horns and seven eyes. Well, obviously, the seven horns is perfection of strength and power and authority. The seven eyes, this multiple facet of the Holy Spirit, meaning Christ sees all things and that the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father and from the Son. Therefore, he's all seeing, perfectly seeing, and he is all powerful. Here is the revelation. Christ is represented in the center of history. He's the overcomer who receives the new covenant for men and women of all the tribes and nations of the world. What we see here is his immeasurable power and his possession that is given to him. Here in Revelation, we see where Christ is the center. He's presented as the center of history. It is at this point we're seeing that the kingdom that was promised is now given to the Son. You see what God is showing to his servants through this prophetic word is what was taking place and transpiring right in the generation, that first generation of believers that would carry out through all of history. The redemptive plan of God is revealed to John in its effect upon apostate Israel and the nations of the world as Jesus Christ rides through history victorious even to this day as the reigning king and all-powerful and all-sovereign Lord. We look at this and we see that Jesus is the one who stepped up. It's the lamb. And he took that seal that had been prepared before the foundation of the world. The lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. The decision had already been made before the sin in the Garden of Eden. In the heart of God, God already had a plan that his glory would be seen. In spite of man's fallenness, it would be used to show his glory and his majesty and his genius redemption that God would come in the flesh and redeem. And no one would be able to hold a charge against God that he was not just and not loving. Even Lucifer would be exposed for who he is, for Jesus would pay the price and seal that covenant. That covenant was made by God himself before the foundation of the world. And it was preserved and held, and no one was worthy to open the seal until the lamb came along. We see this is the picture that Daniel the prophet saw in the Old Testament. In Daniel chapter 7, we've referenced verse 13 and 14 a couple of times, and you may see it more as we go forward. Why? Because it's a picture of this time in history. When Jesus dies on the cross and he rises again, he ascends into heaven. Here we see the prophet says, In my vision at night, I looked, and there before me was one like a son of man, coming with the clouds of heaven. And he approached the Ancient of Days and was led into his presence. That's what John saw. He who sat on the throne had this book in his right hand. And the Lamb went forth and took that book. And it says in verse 14, of Daniel chapter 7, he was given authority. He was given glory and sovereign power. All nations and peoples of every language worshiped him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away, and his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. No wonder we see later in this chapter all of heaven erupting in worship and praise, because this is the picture of our Christ who was deemed worthy through his death and burial to open up the new covenant, the new seal, to bring forth in all of history. The central message of the Bible itself is salvation through Jesus Christ, the mediator of the New Testament, the new covenant. Apart from his work, which he acquired through eternal possession of this covenant, Without that, there's no hope for any of us. He, therefore, is the overwhelming conqueror. It says in the next couple of verses, verse 8 of the same chapter, 
And when he had taken it, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the Lamb. Each one had a harp, and they were holding golden bowls full of incense, incense, which are the prayers of God's people. Golden bowls full of incense represent, of course, symbolically the prayers of the saints. And I want to say held the prayers of the saints. Is in Psalm 141, verse 2, where Psalmist David says, May my prayer be set before you like incense. Luke 1 and 10, speaking about the time of the father of John the Baptist, Zechariah, it said in verse 10, And when the time for the burning of the incense came, and all the symbol worshipers were praying together, prayer goes as an incense right before the throne of God. We'll see this again in Revelation chapter 8. This is significant not only for the early church, but for us today. The early church needed to hear that the prayers that had been prayed, the intercessions that had taken place, as they faced all kinds of odds and the original 12 apostles being killed off, and now John after being boiled in the oil, is on the Isle of Patmos, and he's writing back to them, what hope do they have except they see that their prayers are preserved as valuable and that God receives them as sweet incense. We'll see later in chapter 8 how those prayers are used by God to send forth his work and judgments into the earth. He's telling them here that he values their intercession and their prayer. The fact that he puts them in golden bowls says to us, prayer is vitally important. What I want you to see today in this exhortation is that what John saw was the lamb who was worthy to open the New Testament, the seal of the covenant. And as he begins to do so and takes the book, all of heaven erupts in worship. And we're going to talk about that next time today in the world.